Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy. Today I'm gonna to tell you why I prefer using Orca Slicer over Flash Print when it comes to slicing files for the Flash Forge Adventure 5M and the 5M Pro. I've seen this question posed a few different times on this channel because when it comes to slicers, a lot of people say, hey, I use Orca Slicer. Orca Slicer is the best. You should use Orca Slicer. And then other people look at it and say, okay, well, I keep seeing that, but why? Why exactly should I use Orca Slicer? Or why do you prefer to use Orca Slicer as opposed to Flash Print? Because ultimately, don't they do the same things? Well, in some ways, yes, and in some ways, no. But I'm just gonna break down why I prefer to use Orca Slicer over Flash Print. All right, so let's get started. Now, one of the main things I like about Orca Slicer is the fact that it's an open source project, which means regular people in the community like you and me can contribute to its overall quality, provided that we have the knowledge on how to do so. And the reason why open source software is so important is because it provides an extra layer of transparency. So anyone can go in and look at the code, will know exactly what's going on. And if there's any red flags that happen to appear, members of the community will be able to point that out and make sure that everyone just sort of stays in line. As opposed to something like Flash Print, which is not an open source project, which means that only Flash Forge has access to it. They can choose to do whatever they want with it, and there's really nothing that we can do to change it. And even though the 3D printing community loves open source everything, that's not the only reason why Orca Slicer is preferred. You don't just want to use Orca Slicer just because it's open source and it starts and ends there. It's also updated quite frequently with new features that can improve the overall 3D printing experience in general. So here's the GitHub where Orca Slicer is stored. And as you can see here, we are now on version 2.1.1 that was released on June 26. Now, if we scroll down, we'll be able to see the other releases as well. So the previous version was released on June 21st. Here's the release candidate that was before 2.1 was officially official. That was released on June 17th. Continue to scroll down. May 31st, that was for a beta. Continue to scroll down from here. And look at all these improvements that were done. And these are all the all of the people who contributed to all of those updates. 2.0 was in March. And then we also have the release candidate that was March 23rd. And then we've got on March 12th was the beta for 2.0.0. So as you can see, it's constantly updated and it's updated pretty frequently. This here is Flash Print. And if I look at the help menu, I'll be able to see that I'm currently running version 5.8.3. And I've been on this version for a long time, but there has also been some updates since then. And when I check for updates, it tells me exactly what has changed in those updates. So from the version that I have, which is right here, we'll see that they have one, two, three, four more versions after that. But as you can see, this is really just for supporting Flash Forge's own printers. It's not really adding anything to the slicer or adding any kind of modern touches to slicing software technology in order to make your prints better or to solve any problems that Orca Slicer tends to do. But that's not the only reason why I prefer to use Orca Slicer. So let's just say that I wanted to download the latest version of Flash Print. You would think that all we'll need to do is go to the official Flash Forge website and just find where they keep their Flash Print download and then get the latest version from there. But as you can see, they only have version 5.8.3 up for Windows 32-bit or 64-bit, which is the same version that I have. It is not the latest version of Flash Print. So let's just say that was just for the 5M Pro. Let me just go to the 5M. Well, it's the exact same thing. They don't have the latest version of Flash Print available, but you could just go back to Flash Print and download the latest update from here. So I will go to the help menu. I will go to check for updates. It says that there's one available to download. I'll select yes. And then it takes me to this random webpage called iShare3D.com. It wants me to just download this zip file and Flash Forge is nowhere in the name and it doesn't have HTTPS 
in the address. And the reason why that's so important, because according to Google, HTTPS is encrypted in order to increase security of data transfers. But if I'd want it to just download this anyway, and I just say, okay, go ahead and save it, Google will not let me do that. You can see, as you just saw up here, it told me that it's not going to allow me to download that file from that website because it cannot verify the security of that file because the website is not protected. Now, I'm not saying that FlashForge has done anything to these files, but what I am saying is that it's a general best practice to not download files from sources that are not secure, because there's no way for you to know if someone has gotten into that website, tampered with that file, and then when you download it and run it, it could possibly do something to your computer. So it's always best to just be on the safe side as often as you can, especially now on the internet, because it's just not safe to go about and just do whatever you want to do. You have to be protected. And when I want to be protected, I'm using Aura to help me online. And it's fortunate that they also happen to be the sponsor of today's video. So let me tell you a quick story. When I signed up for Aura, one of the first things that I did was Google myself just to see what kind of information was out there about me. And I didn't think that it would be too much, but I was surprised when I went on one of those people finding websites. This website showed my age, my current home address, my past addresses, my current phone number, the phone number that I had in the house when I was growing up as a child, the phone number to a cell phone that I no longer use, any aliases that I use online, and relatives that I'm associated with. So then I logged into my Aura account and they have this really cool feature where you can have them request removal of that information from those websites. And you don't have to do anything except sit back and let them do their work. But if you do happen to download a file that can be potentially harmful to your computer and you have Aura, they'll be able to protect you from that. And in addition to that, you'll also have access to a VPN that's gonna encrypt your data when you're browsing online on your computer at home you can also use that VPN when you're out and about on your phone. So while Aura can protect your computer and your digital life, it can also protect you in your personal life. You can set it up to monitor your credit, to look for any anomalies that might pop up in case someone has stolen your identity. You can use it as a password manager and you can generate some really complex, unique passwords that you definitely need to use on every website where you have an account. So if you want to protect yourself or your family online, check out the first link in the description, or you can go to aura.com slash figure feedback, and that will unlock a free 14 day trial for you to try out Aura for yourself. Thank you very much Aura for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the slicers. So now we're back in Orca Slicer. And one of the other things that I like about it is that since I have more than one printer from a different manufacturer, I can use just this slicer and store the profiles for all of those different types of printers, as opposed to flash print where it's just gonna be for flash forge things. So if you only have flash forge printers, then it can work out just fine for you from that regard. But the reason why I like to use Orca slicers is because I have access to more. So I've got the 5M Pro right here, but at the same time, I have some profiles and some presets for the Neptune 4. And I also need to have another profile enabled for this as well, because in the very near future, I'm going to be showing off the Creality Ender 3 V3 SE because I really want to see how beginner friendly is this machine because it is one of those printers where if you're looking for one of the most affordable and reliable beginning level 3D printers, this is the one that pops up along with a couple others, but I'm going to be checking this one out and I'm going to start with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle as most people will and I'll just hit confirm right there. So now when that printer comes in and I am ready to try it out. All I have to do is make sure that I've got that profile selected and everything is already set up and ready to go. So that's another reason why it works for me and other people have different printers from different manufacturers that may also be using Orca Slicer for that very reason. Now, as far as settings go, a lot of what you can do in Orca Slicer, especially from a very basic perspective, is the same thing that you can do inside of Flash Print. Now, I've got the Advanced tab open, but I can just 
close that off and I just have access to some very simple basic features such as layer height which in a lot of cases you won't change unless you're trying to squeeze more quality out of your print so 0.2 uh, layer height for a 0.4 millimeter nozzle is pretty standard here. And then you can also go to strength and you can change the amount of walls that you're going to have. You can change the top shell layers and the thickness of that. You know, most of the time I don't mess with these because I really don't need to. The thing that I will mess with the most is going to be the infill. Now this is where Orca Slicer is superior because you can see all of these different types of infills that you can use. Now granted, most of the time you're only going to be sticking to between one and three infills. We tend to pick one that we like the most and just sort of roll with it. Um, for me, it started off with Gyroid after I graduated from Grid. I went to Gyroid and then when Crosshatch came out, I used Crosshatch for everything and everything's been working out just fine. So I'm totally cool with that. Now taking it back over to flash print, let's say I wanted to print this Wolverine mask for one of those big brick Lego figures here. I can go to start slicing and it's only when I do that that I have access to the different uh, things that I can change here. So as you can see, we got the nozzle size here and it has profiles for all of Flash Forge's nozzles and that's good. You can also get that in Orca Slicer as well. You can also change your material type. So Flash Force, they also make a lot of different filaments. So you got your different filament profiles there. You can also set up your filament profiles in Orca Slicer, change your extruder temperature, change the bed temperature. Yeah, you can do all that. And then here are some of the other things that I mentioned. You know, you can still, you're changing the amount of, uh, of uh, walls that you have for your shells. You can control the speed, you know, and just like Orca Slicer, a lot of these things I'm not going to change. When it comes to the infill, you have a few different options, but you don't have as many infill options as you do in Orca Slicer. So it's grid by default, but then you just have line, hexagon, triangle, and 3D infill. So you're very limited to the infill choices that you have. And then you can also set up supports if you want to. So you have the option to customize things to your liking with this, just like you do in Orca Slicer. So if I wanted to print this out, this is gonna need support. So I'll just click the support button and then I'll just say, hey, auto supports, you know, whatever. You see that those supports there are generated. That's what it's going to look like. And then I can start slicing this file, slice it with what I have here. Um, a raft or a brim is suggested for fixing tree-like supports on the plate. Uh, let's just say add a brim, why not? And then it slices the model and you'll see that it is going to take 55 minutes to print this mask and this is what it's going to look like. Now let me do this exact same thing over in Orca Slicer. So now let me do the exact same thing in Orca Slicer here. All right, so there's the Wolverine mask and I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. So I'm gonna go over to supports. I'm gonna enable supports and do the tree supports. And then I'm gonna also add a brim because it was a brim in flash print as well. Go ahead and slice this plate. And you see it is going to take 57 minutes and 34 seconds with all those default settings. So the time to, the time to print is not too much different. Maybe a few minutes, really no big deal, but everything sliced very quickly. And as you can see, they look pretty much the same in how it's going to come out. Now, if I wanted to, if my printer was on, I'll be able to take this and send it wirelessly over to the printer, but I won't be able to tell the printer to level the bed before it prints. For some reason in this regular version of Orca Slicer, I cannot do that with Flash Forge. But Flash Forge created a fork of Orca Slicer that they call Orca Flash Forge, and you can do it from there if you wanted to. But there's also a problem as to why I don't want to really use Orca Flash Forge as well. So this is Orca Flash Forge. It looks identical to Orca Slicer, but here's the reason why I don't really want to use this. So let's just say I wanted to update this because this version, it lags behind the regular Orca Slicer as far as features and stuff goes. But if I wanted to update it to make it more modern, I can see that I'll just hit okay and we can download the new version. But look at what it does. It takes me once again to iShare 3D 
Com in order to download this random file here. And again, it doesn't have the protections that make me feel comfortable with downloading and installing this. So I just leave it as it is. So at the end of the day, flash print is fine. You know, if you're just trying to just shoot off some prints, get them over to your printer, get them printed out, and you don't want to dig deep into all the different settings and features, and you don't really want to keep up or don't really care about any kind of advancements when it comes to slicers, it'll get the job done and it'll work just fine. But for me, the fact that I have different printers and I can just have access to um, all of them right in a single slicer and not have to jump around to different slicers. And the fact that I do want to stay up to date with the latest advancements in slicing software from an open source perspective. That's why I'm going to prefer Orca Slicer. And last but certainly not least, the security implications of downloading from that site that uh, not even Google Chrome is going to let me do by default. So that's it, you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And remember, if you want to protect yourself online, and I highly suggest that you do, give Aura a shot. So once again, it's going to be Aura.com slash figure feedback for your free 14-day free trial. And link is going to be in the description. So let me know down in the comments which your preferred slicer of choice. And if you use FlashForge printers, do you use Flash Print? Yes or no? Or what slicer do you prefer? Really curious to know your thoughts about all of that. And be sure to stay Stay tuned and subscribe if you haven't, because I always got more videos coming right down the pipeline. So until then, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.